before you left, huh? Wait a second. That's what I'm talking about. Not today. That's the good stuff. Well, welcome back. Today, we got the old farm truck sitting in here, soaking up the heat. And, uh, we can do a little backstory on it. Some of you are uh, familiar with it. Some of you still get it confused with the uh, original farm truck. And uh, I will start off by saying calling it the farm truck has nothing to do with the uh, awesomeness of the farm truck that you see on TV on Street Outlaws. Um, before this farm truck I had a 77 C20. Um, very famous truck. But anyway, when I got that truck, I just started saying, let's go for a ride in the old farm truck. And the name kind of stuck. So that turned into the farm truck. And sadly, it is no longer in my life. And we're not going to get into that in this video. But there's a new farm truck. It's a 1978 Cheyenne C10, which is a half ton, if you didn't know. Uh, it is a, I discovered that it's a big 10, which is uh, like a heavy half is another name. Uh, I think the GMC was a heavy half and the Chevy was a big 10. So that just meant that it got some bigger springs in the back and uh, I don't know, a few things that, you know, nothing really too special, but a little heavier duty if you want to uh, haul some stuff around or do some towing. But uh, I've had this truck for a few years now. It's actually, I've had it just as long as I've had the dually. Um, I was uh, wheeling and dealing and I had a hankering for a square body, but they started to get kind of uh, extinct, and if you found them, people wanted a million dollars for them. But I was looking around for one, wasn't having too much luck. Um, I had some money, and I was just kind of looking to, you know, spend some cash on something. And uh, an old friend of mine, good friend, not anymore. He uh, he sent me a message one day. I was sitting there doing nothing, just scrolling through the old Facebook, and uh, he said, <clears throat> "Hey, you gotta check this out." And I think he actually might have just tagged me in the in the post or whatever. So I go check it out, and this kid. Uh, lived maybe an hour away from me. I kind of knew his name, knew kind of who he was, you know, through, you know, vehicles and stuff that he had, but 
he had this thing listed, and uh, it was a pretty funny ad. I wish I had a, a copy and pasted it, you know, um, just to remember exactly what it said. It'd be cool to tell you that now, but I can't. But it basically said, you know, who wants this old farm truck looking thing? Come do a smoky burnout. And, uh, you know, I think he had it like a couple thousand dollars, which, you know, was kind of nuts. But, you know, he's like, it's got a 350 in it, runs good. So, it was basically the colors you see, the hood was like somebody danced on it and uh, it was all caved in, didn't shut. I think it was held down with like straps or something. And uh, the bed was blue and it had this old stupid cap on the back. Um, it had an old green bench seat bolted in the back of the bed. I mean it was bolted down too, it took some time to get it out. Uh, so anyway, there was a lot of comments on the kids posts and everything and you know people were laughing at it and uh, he said he mentioned that he would deliver it and I knew he had a um, you know a nice car hauler and stuff and uh, a diesel truck that he towed stuff around with and uh, I said Tow that thing to my house, I'll give you 1500 bucks cash. That's it. So, we ended up, he messaged me, and he said, you serious, you want this thing? I said, it, it runs, it drives. He said, yep. I said, the frame's not broken in half. Nope. I said, you got the title, yep. It's a 78, oh yeah. Bring it to my house give me the fifteen hundred bucks so there was a lot of tire kickers on it a lot of people said I'm coming down to look at it no he loaded it up he brought it over and I guess I'll just I'll start off with so the story about the truck that he gave me was he went he took a ride a couple hours away or so and this guy, older guy, had, you know, this house who was uh, a basic cleanup of this house where the guy's brother had passed away. He got sick and passed away. Um, and he had a bunch of cars and stuff like that, but he had two square body trucks. And one was this, and one was like a 80, you know, 85, 86, something like that. Uh, Four-wheel drive, half ton that was real rotten, real bad. Uh, didn't run or anything. So the kid, he had enough room on, he had like a two car trailer. So he made some sort of a deal, probably scrap price, and uh, he bought both trucks. And he was going to do something with one of them. He had already had a square body that, you know, needed some parts. But anyway, the old guy said, you know, man, we were gonna, we were just gonna pull that motor and cut that thing up into pieces and throw it away. And he said, well, I'm glad he didn't. So, basically rescued these trucks. Um, so the story was, the guy's brother, he uh, did a lot of work to this truck. Every, I mean, every bushing and line and, you know, any part that you could replace he did it. I mean, the truck itself, the body is not very good. But, um, so anyway, he loved the truck and he traveled between Tennessee and all over the place. And sometimes he lived down in Tennessee, I think, with his girlfriend or wife or something. And then he traveled around, he traveled to Mass, whatever drove the truck everywhere so he wanted to be reliable so the the engine that was in it I'm assuming was a 350 um, 
and it got tired. So he's old, you know, and he did certain stuff, but, you know, he jammed some sheet metal screws here and there and did some patches and, you know, held it together, but he wasn't about to do any engine swap. So he, um, he ended up going to his, his guy, you know, his local garage, and uh, he brought the truck there and he said, I want, I want a replacement, you know, engine, just a, you know, a regular, just a replacement engine stock that's supposed to go in there that runs good, doesn't burn oil. I can just, you know, hit the key and turn it, you know, just go and drive it and drive it and drive it. So the story goes that they happened to hit a wrong button when ordering the uh, crate motor for it and they ended up getting the step up the GM performance um, which obviously has a bigger cam and different heads and stuff like that so that was kind of the story I don't know I looked under the hood and it just looked like a half-ass painted Chevy Orange like you know small block 350 like anyone I ever seen um, wasn't running very good so anyway that's the that was the story from the guy so the guy he got it back from the shop and he he was convinced that the timing was off so he pulled the distributor and he messed with that and he did a lot of things swapped wires around and um, did a lot of stuff to try to figure out why this thing ran choppy you know so in his eyes it didn't run right so it ended up sitting and he was almost ready getting it you know every other thing he put new tires he put you know stuff like that just to get it ready for his journey and uh, took a turn for the worst and um, passed away so there the truck sat uh, for who knows how long so that's how this kid ended up with it and um, I had no interest in the other truck because I only really liked the the round eyes um, so brought it over uh, he hopped in it and turned the key on the trailer put it in reverse put it in drive he said good enough for you I said good enough for me here's the money so took it off put it in the driveway kinda hungry here crystal clear oh there we go So after, um, you know, a couple days, whatever, I uh, started, you know, messing around with it, checking it out all over the place, and uh, my buddy there came over, my chum, came over, he was checking it out, 
and kind of looking around and there was some telltale signs of um, that it could be a crate motor um, things like um, so certain ways you know that um, things that were starting to tell us that it was a crate motor was um, things like you know allen head bolts on the time and cover um, the uh, the markings on the heads uh, the fact that if you notice you got a dipstick there and there's another one over there why why is there dual dipsticks well when they were making the crate you know the replacement crate motors um, you know they made it to go in a number of different vehicles so uh, some cars and trucks had the dipstick on driver's side and some had it on that side so they put a hole on the in the block on either side you know where you could put it in the block of the oil pan or whatever um, so that was kind of, you know, there's a couple things like that. And, um, it had a, it had a quadrajet on it that was just not right. I mean, it was, uh, definitely something going on there. Uh, that thing was all wacky. Um, the distributor was, didn't even have a bolt or a hold down. It wasn't even, uh, it was just sitting there and, um. Uh, it ran, you know, it sat there and idled good, but as soon as you tried to, um, you know, go drive it down the road and give it gas, it just wanted to die. So, we started checking things like firing order and, uh, of course it was all off I mean it was the wires we basically tore them off started fresh and they were all on wrong so we did that and uh, obviously got a hold down you know for the distributor and got ready to to you know get the timing close and get that going so uh, we did that and then it had you notice it has, you know, headers on it now, obviously, but it had um, regular cast iron manifolds. It had a brand new Y pipe on the exhaust after that, and it had that muffler, that famous muffler that I'm still using. It's on the roof of the Raider plow truck. Um, it had that, and then just a little, little pea shooter, like a two-inch tailpipe, coming out the back. And uh, so that was pretty funny. And, you know, things like that led to the story of the old guy having it. So, you know, my chum there, you know, he was looking at it. And, uh, you know, he's looking underneath of it, looking all around. And, you know, I mean, the body ain't too great, but, you know, this thing, uh, it's uh, got a lot of new parts on it. So, once we got the firing order right and got it, the distributor halfway decent, and the carburetor, yeah, it was wacky, but we had messed with it a little bit and got it to sit there and run. So, it was running and it sounded good. I mean, the oil was like, I mean, you could, you, you know, you could put that back in the court and put it on the shelf and sell it. It was so clean, and uh, you know, we took off the those valve covers. That's what it had, and everything, and you know, the old school aluminum fin covers. You take off the cap, and you, you know, we looked in there with a the light. It's like, wow, it's really clean in there. You know, it just looks like a new engine. So I was up here, kind of messing around, and. He says, uh, he says, you got to come back here and listen to this tailpipe. So he's standing back there, and I, you know, it was it was pretty cold out, and uh, so the thing's back there steaming away, 
and this thing, this little tailpipe sitting there going to drum like and he's he goes, Man, this thing's got a big cam in it. So that's when I knew I made a good purchase here because you know, basically the engine itself, you know, was uh was worth it for the for the purchase. So um, it's got a turbo 350 transmission, you know, three-speed automatic, and uh, just very simple. So then I just uh, I messed around with the carburetor a bit and I said screw it. I went up to AutoZone, I grabbed the Edelbrock, you know, the good old Edelbrock, you know, electric choke. Can't go wrong. I grabbed it off the shelf. Here's the money. I bolted it on. Of course I already had an aluminum intake on it. Uh, so I bolted it on tap the key. I mean, that's it. You can't go wrong. So, then she, then, you know, she was running. So, there's some video, uh, there is videos on there, you know, um, of when I first got it, but it was kind of funny because I bought this and uh, I put it on the road Actually, I don't even think I had it registered yet. Um, I took the plates off something else. I drove it around, and it just put a smile on my face to drive it. The only thing that would have made it better if it was a standard, like the original farm truck was. Um, but So I ended up, um, a friend of mine had a... a a cap that was a little more, you know, looked a little more fitting to the era of the truck. So we swapped out the caps, and uh, it had like the old style, uh, the old windows on it and stuff, you know, more like farm truck. And I sort of, you know, people would always get mad that I called the other truck the farm truck and said, don't copy the guy, you know, on TV, but. So I started, I sort of made a mockery of that at first and I, I had the cap and the thing about it was is his truck, when he takes off from the line, his, his, uh, his trademark thing is the window in the back of the cap comes off, you know, comes up, opens up. And uh, this one was, the latch was all busted so it didn't actually close unless you put like your own little latch on it. So. I drove around with the window open and I got the beware a dog little sign put that on the cap like he had so I mean it was not the prettiest thing going out of the road you know mismatched colors and uh, definitely had you know some rust here and there but anyway with the blue bed it really stuck you know stuck out so so what happened was, bear with me for a second, we're going to go back to the back story of the dually that we talked about. And this, when I bought this, it was like a matter of a couple of weeks later that kid got a hold of me or 
I found it. I, you know, whatever. It's a blur anyway. But basically, I bought the two trucks within a couple of weeks and uh, spent all my money. But, you know, I had to have, you know, it, when I found the Duallys, of course, I was like, man, I wish I didn't buy the 78, you know, now because I kind of need that money to buy that. But I made it happen. I hustled. I scraped it together. And I could not let that truck get away. So I went from having the only square body was a Suburban, obviously, because I've had that for a long time. But in the driveway, I really didn't have much. And uh, I went from that to two square body trucks. So it's kind of weird how that happened. But <clears throat> that's how I got it. And uh, I mean, it's been three, four years now, something like that. And this truck has just been, I mean, a great truck. I mean, yes, the engine is, I mean, it's still completely fresh, you know. Um, you know, it gets, um, it gets a lot of attention. Uh, people always say, man, that truck's in nice shape. What year is it, you know, and like, it's 2021, you know, but I mess around with them sometimes. But, um, you know, it's funny that they say that because, you know, the the, uh, the truck's really not in good shape at all. Um, it's definitely got a lot of issues rust-wise. But I started driving it around, and uh, I don't know. I think it was at least a year or so before I um, decided to, I got rid of, I got sick of the cap the way it looked and uh, I took that off and then I drove it for a while with no cap and uh, I scrapped with it, I mean I loaded this thing down, um, towed cars with it, stuff that I shouldn't have with a half ton truck, I did it. And uh, I just really enjoyed it. And um, it wasn't until driving around with my wife in there, and uh, she said, you know, it's awfully breezy over here on the passenger side. And I didn't even know, but they had thrown like this carpet out of something else in there. And I lifted it up. Sure enough, there was no floor on the passenger side. It was all rotted through. So. There's also a video of that on there where I, I take, I explain the, like the, the panels on like a wash machine or a dryer, very thick sheet metal, very durable stuff. And I took a piece off of a scrap uh, washer and I made my whole floor panel up there and, uh, you know, put all the, put some insulation stuff in there and sprayed it all down basically sealed the whole floor up so there was no leaks coming through and um, well I ended up uh, I had to, the first thing I had to do was get rid of that exhaust you know um, that just wasn't good and uh, like I explained before uh, I had a set of headers that I saved for a long time and I thought they were for you know, a Chevy truck just with a small block, regular headers, but um, so I had those sitting down in my basement and I got some, st I, I bought a um, just a universal dual kit not off of eBay or something and it basically gave you all the pipes, you know, without the mufflers and uh, uh, a YouTube friend of mine always hooks me up with the coolest stuff. Uh, he sent me a, a set of these uh, Jones. They're like a Jones uh, full bore, like a race muffler, and they look like a small, um, like a small Flowmaster. 
uh, like you know those race flow masters whatever they're called but um, so I ended up going out there and of course you know all the bolts were nice and easy to come out of the manifolds on that uh, they weren't on actually they weren't even tight but ripped the manifolds off ripped the Y pipe the whole rest of the exhaust got all got rid of all that and then um, I wrestled with those headers and I, I couldn't believe it I said I've, I've done a lot of old Chevy trucks and stuff and put headers on a lot of things this is a real pain in the ass and I figured it was just because I was doing it in the driveway but man it fought me and uh, I finally got them on but I wasn't too sure you know if they were right or not or, or if the engine or the motor mounts were were off or they were sloppy or something because the tubes came real close to a lot of things you know touched the control arms and I had to kind of dent it in in a couple spots to to make it work and uh, so got them all on there bolted on and then of course I got it up in the air a little bit so I could get underneath and start doing the exhaust and when I got under there you got the the cross member you know for the transmission and you got the headers you know come down they're supposed to come down so that you know the collector is supposed to end up so the exhaust goes you know underneath the cross member but instead they were too high and they were actually pointing at a little bit of an angle and pointing right at the cross member so I said oh shit like what am I gonna do now I mean I don't want to take those headers off again because and I mean I really didn't have you know the cash to just be you know buying a new set of headers anyway and uh, you can see how rusty those headers are already just from driving it through the winters but you can see how it's supposed to be straight like that and uh, cross members up in there I don't know if you can see it right there but you can see how that header is like too high and it's pointing down a little bit but at first I just um, I made like a you know I jammed some pipes in there and I welded the shit out of them and I just forced it all together because I wanted to drive the truck and uh, I wanted the exhaust hooked up so I put it together and uh, you can see so I drove it for a little while like that, but um, it kept on loosening the bolts on the collectors from the vibration, and it was rattling and hitting the cross member, and it was uh, it ended up cracking the pipes from the you know the vibration and the force, so that was no good. So at the time I I was working um, started working at a repair shop and uh, the guy let me have a little time on the lift so I brought my welder right in he didn't have a good one and uh, I ended up buying these off of eBay these little flex pieces like little universal things and uh, I welded the um, collector pieces right to them and then I just came under here and so they allowed me to you know have that slight little bend and then be able to uh, run underneath I also uh, I took the torch to the cross member in a couple of spots and kind of clearanced it a little bit um, and I mean it worked and uh, you know they don't leak down there but If you can, oh yeah, you can see it right there. Look at that. Right where that's touching the the uh, control arm, it broke through, and that's where the leak's coming from. The rest of the exhaust is all sealed, but there's the leak right there. So, and you can see 
one of the biggest problems with the truck is the rear main seal uh, leaks a pretty good amount of oil. Um, can smell the chili. So it seems like uh, when they put the uh, engine together, maybe they bought it as a short block, long block, I don't know. But for whatever reason, someone screwed up that rear main seal, which is to do that seal, the transmission has to be out or, you know, away from the engine. Um, and it's a... The crankshaft has a seal at the back where the oil pan comes up and it meets that and everything and uh, there's a seal right there and it's a very important seal which is why it's called rear main seal. But <clears throat> It's very easy to screw that up and uh, it appears that obviously they did because uh, it leaks quite a bit of oil but you know it's really not crazy I mean it, it looks like a lot on the ground sometimes but when I check it it's like a quart low you know every week we can have depends how much I drive it too um, I started driving it to work which I had to take the uh, highway and you know it, it um, revved out pretty good. I mean, it's got like 355s, I think, or 373. I think 355s um, gears in the rear end. So you know, trying to keep up with traffic, it revved up pretty good. But I thought something was wrong with the uh, the oil pressure gauge because it just had like an old shitty one in it. And it read like 80 pounds of oil pressure. I mean, it just pinned it when you were going. So, come to find out, it really does have that much oil pressure. And uh, my old boss, you know, mechanic for years, he said, it's, he said, it's too much. He said, that's too much oil pressure. He said, they put like a racing, um, you know, a racing oil pump or something in there. So, what was happening was on the highway, I would get a lot of like burning oil smell would come right in the cab. Uh, especially when I got going, you know, 70, 75 miles an hour. Um, so come to find out, it was that um, that dipstick on the passenger side. Uh, it was out, and I didn't even know it. It was actually, well, anyway, the dipstick was out, so he kind of put me on to finding that and I found that and sure enough what was happening was there's so much oil pressure that it's going it's finding its weak points right in the engine so um, you know coming out of places but it was what was happening it was spurting right out of that hole right onto the header so it's the weirdest thing but that copper homemade copper uh, dipstick that's in there it was actually sitting in the inner fender, uh, kind of tucked in there, with the dipstick itself in the tube and everything. So I dug that out of there, and I lined it up and uh, tapped it in the hole. It fits nice and tight, but it's funny because people say, like, oh, where do you check the oil? Which one? And it actually... That one over there is, does not read right. It's the one on this side that actually has the correct reading, I've found, because, you know, I've changed the oil and stuff in it, so I, I know how much and everything it takes. But So, having that rear main seal weak already and then having 80 pounds of oil pressure when you're, when you're driving and when it's cold makes it even worse on the oil leak, but um, it's something I've always dealt with. Doesn't really bother me any. Uh, driveways, whatever. 
not a brand new driveway. I laugh sometimes because uh, I'll pull into you know a nice neighborhood or something, somebody's house and needs some some junk picked up, and I back right in the driveway and shut it off, and she leaves her she leaves a good little puddle, and you know I've had people call me up. Not really. Well, you could tell they were a little bit mad, but they were like, you know, your truck's leaking something. And I said, oh, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll have to check that out. So, uh, there's really no other major, you know, issues as far as uh, mechanically, you know, running and driving. go for one of those lights again but yeah we'll do another video probably uh, sometime you know of like every single little thing that's wrong with this truck because you know some of you like that but there is a lot but it's uh I like it because it's you know it's an old farm truck it's just it puts a smile on my face because you don't got to worry about it, you know, you bang it up, you dent it, you scratch it, whatever, you spray some primer on there, and uh, I always figured, if anything, it's got that brand new crate engine in it, so it's like a, like a rolling engine stand, but it's really turned out to be a good truck and uh, nothing like the original farm truck but Tommy, three left after this. What are you doing? You get over here and drink these things. Wow, what a difference. Big difference. Chili's ready. Can't go wrong. Hormel chili. That's it. The old backstory, the old farm truck up here in northern Maine, where I ended up. Thursday night, party time. <coughs> party time. can't believe it. You're actually still watching. Yeah. <coughs> wow. Cheers to that. Oh. Thursday night. It's up here. Just me. Wood stove's going. Chili's hot. Cold out there. I'll tell you that.
you know, watch me eat this whole thing. I don't care. Follow me if you watch or not. Hope you enjoyed another backstory. What will I do when I run out of vehicles? Do stories on. I don't know. Hopefully something happens. Guess that's about it. Sign off. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate it. See you on the next one. I won't see y'all on the next one. No, just see you on the next one. I knew you'd stick around. See you on the streets.